Triangle of fairness. Triangle of fairness. Triangle of fairness. Triangle of fairness. I'm burning the apple. Oh, Wayne wins. I know that I I won the flip and then I won the wheel and I got the Bob you've won one out of like 15 coin flips I got the full redemption after all the coin flip stuff how did we get back here well I could change it so it was like tails is apple and I burn the other one so apple wins you're gonna arbitrarily change the rules after with a flip yeah of course Mark that could make someone so angry oh now you're gonna do it <laughs> What if, what if, ooh, here's how we do. We end the episode on a cliffhanger and we don't say who won ooh. until the next episode. People have to listen to the next episode. That way we can make up for Bob's next fuck up. Wow, okay, so, all right, well. Oh, blame weed, blame weed, blame weed. Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable. This week, it's the least defeat literary extravaganza you'll ever witness. Polarizing Mark louses grimdark tales and revolutionizes linguistic learning. Bob dislikes horror and admits that the law beat the love of graffitied sliced trees out of him. And Wheelie Cunning Wade reveals the hidden kryptonite of AI authors and how to pass book reviews. From Pornhammer to criticism repurposing. Yeah. It's time for reading. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Distractable. I'm today's host, Wade. Why? Because I won. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you've never been here before, there's a show where one of us hosts, the other two compete for points, the host declares a winner at the end, they host the next episode, whatever we do in the meantime is up to, well, in this case, me. And I'm joined as always by my two co-hosts, Mark and Bob. Hi guys. It almost seems like he doesn't want to be the host. Oh, I like hosting. The subreddit tells me I'm the best host. It's a, it's a lot of work, Mark. You gotta think of a thing. I mean, he does have absolute power above any kind of uh, government agency in the world. Um, it is the most official position, uh, which is why it's so temporary when it can't last or else that kind of power would go to your head. You gotta have term limits, Mark. You gotta have term limits. That's true. How many win limits? Should we set win limits? Ooh, Wait, set win limits. Win limits. Nobody can win more than me. Uh, I don't think that's constitutional. All right. Our win limits are set. Good thinking, boys. Which one of us is the judiciary branch? <laughs> oh, I want to be Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> when do I get to go on the mega yacht? Yeah, okay. All right. So the subreddit is the is Congress. Oh, I'm yeah. the Senate. You're the judiciary branch. And then Wade is uh, president. Yay. Also, you have to say it right, Mark. I am the Senate. Oh, right. I, say, okay. get this. I thought you, because you went to law school, you were going to say I said judiciary branch wrong. And I was going to be like very confused. It's actually judiciary. <laughs> it's you, judiciary branch. Put your whole judici in this. It's actually pronounced judiciary. <laughs> There's someone out there who's in law school right now who's just. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else is just like, man, when are they going to get on with the show? If they think we're going to get on with anything, they have a lot of things coming. Oh, they got a lot of things coming. What does that phrase mean? I tell you, I tell you what. Let's Google it. I'll tell you, but what will I tell you? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what for? Is it short for something? Used to introduce a suggestion or to emphasize a statement. That doesn't explain it at all. No, that's what I got. I'm not going to Google it. I could. I have Google open, like, right there. And I have a keyboard and everything. Tell you what, I'll let you borrow the car if you fill it up with gas. It seems like it's a, typically followed by a thing like that, where it's like a compromise, where it's like, I'll let you do this, or I'll, I'll say this, or I'll do that, if. I know, I know how to use it. I'm just saying I don't understand what it means. Like, it's just a random exclamation. I might as well be just going... Well, look at my ass! <laughs> I'll let you borrow the car if you fill it up with gas. We could try to make that the replacement. We can... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, look at my ass. It's hotter than heck out there. I don't know why that got me. Though. <laughs> Something about that feels way weirder, I guess, but... Yeah. Yes, uh, I would agree. Yeah. You know, if, if the if the episode starts with a stupid enough humor, eventually something will make me laugh. <laughs> 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 look at my... <laughs> 
It's like a like a firefighter looking over like a collapsed building. Well, look at my ass! So many people died in this horrible tragedy. <laughs> The next time you're out there about to say, I'll tell you what, try, well, look at my ass and see if you get the same reaction. Also, you get probably a way better reaction. I tell you what, doesn't get anyone's attention anymore. That's all, that's passe. That's overdone. Look at my ass. Everyone's going to be like, what? Oh, what an interesting statement you just made. Because I feel like, I feel like I'll tell you what could be used in any circumstance. Like you, anyone uses that, even like therapy, you know, someone's trying to get someone, I'll tell you what. And it's like, well, look at my ass. <laughs> Is this an emotional response or is this like <laughs> look look at look at my ass? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're talking to your colorectal doctor, they would be like, "Sir, I'm about to." <sighs> How you guys doing? We move in a week, so you're doing terribly. Uh, I, well, it, we're pretty packed, honestly. That we we made one room in our house, the room where all the boxes go, and it's like floor to ceiling, like like half full of stuff. I was gonna say, how would you do that, you magician? Mm, we put them there with our arms. Look at my ass. It was not easy. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works. We move next Thursday. We pack everything, and then the next the Friday, uh, Mandy flies, and then, uh, yeah. Everything's really good, and I'm not terrified. On behalf of the viewers, I have to ask, is the infamous fridge making the move with you? Nah, that Hellfire thing can stay here. I, you, you know what, though? I had to write in the disclosure or selling the house that the fridge is a piece of shit it is a piece of shit i thought it was okay no it's awful in california you have to disclose everything if you know that there's a problem with your house and you're selling it you have to disclose it so i put like oh we got ants once and we had orkin come fix that and the fridge sucks the fridge water pools in the bottom rushes out the front every time you open the deli drawer now so every, like once every three weeks you have to uh, shop vac out the bottom of the fridge or else you got a pool of water that's like a couple inches deep under your drawer i had to write that in there and some idiot still bought this house no no <laughs> what you should have written is yes this is that fridge and left <laughs> it at that and then people would have been like, the fridge. And then they would Google, like, what happened to the fridge? And it might actually lead to your episode of the fridge. What happened to the fridge? There's no way that brings up anything about us. Uh, it brings up William the Refrigerator Perry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the famous William Perry fridge. William the Fridge Perry. Hey, he is he is famous. What are you talking about? Wait, who is that? Hey, sports podcast haver, William Refrigerator Perry was an uh, defensive lineman slash running back for the Chicago Bears in the 80s. I don't know who that is. He was a guy that was built like me, right? He was fucking huge. Built like a refrigerator. But uh -huh. they would sometimes give him the ball and he would just like carry the entire opposing team into the end zone. <laughs> oh, that's kind of awesome. No, it's dope. One time when I was in middle school, I bothered the shit out of my coaches. We were like winning a game, I think, and we had the ball again. And I was like, coach, do the, let's do the refrigerator. Come on, refrigerator me. And he did it. And I got to carry the ball once. He handed no. the ball to me. And I had like little middle school boys hanging off me. Big six foot tall, 250 pound Bob. Just like. <sighs> I didn't get a touchdown, but it was very funny. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like, I gotta admit, I've never heard of this, even though uh, Tyler will be very mad at me, but that's pretty nice. I mean, if you if you haven't talked about him on the podcast, it's pretty fair that you haven't heard of him. It's a good, he's a good, uh, like, character. His story is good. I like, he's a good icon. You can bring it up and sound smart now on the other podcast. Just non sequitur. Tyler's like, hey, Mark, how, how's your week? Refrigerator Perry. <laughs> Have you heard of him? Because I do have. I know it. Look at my ass. <laughs> I mean, it's not different than anything else I say on that podcast, so most of it is just complete nonsense. So, Mark, we're talking about table hockey today. Refrigerator Perry. <laughs> <laughs> That's just your, your initial response to any new topic is Refrigerator Perry? <laughs> <laughs> Look at my ass. I know a lot about Refrigerator Perry. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, I'm moving. Refrigerator, bad. That's it. That's the only question I had for you, but I had to ask because for some reason people seem to think that you're going to move that appliance when I have never encountered anyone in my life who's taken a refrigerator with them when they moved. So that is a very California thing. Take your refrigerator? To take appliances with you. When we bought, when we moved into this place, there weren't 
a washer and dryer. Outside of Cali, all the appliances like come with the place, but here sometimes people like take their appliances with them, which I, I think is kind of weird, but like ovens and stoves too, or like just like, I don't know, man. Some, some places get listed and it says like the appliances are not staying. We're keeping them. So sorry, but the kitchen cabinets, they're coming with me. Well, that's okay. I'm glad I asked then, I suppose. Mark, how are you doing? Did I not say? Uh, no, I was I was criticizing you. No, I totally I totally co-opted that whole first part there. You haven't even talked at all, Mark. <laughs> Why did you seem like you were nervous about the question being asked? How am I? Did I not already give you that answer? What did I say? What, what should I say? Why are you asking that? Why are you asking what I'm doing? What What are you talking about? Yeah, I believe we've covered this extensively. <laughs> <laughs> uh, re refrigerator Perry? Uh, how am I doing? Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> oh, I know the answer to this one. <laughs> Let me tell you how I'm doing. I'll tell you exactly how I'm doing. Please do. I've been... You know I've been. Any illnesses this week? Did you did you catch rickets, Mark? Do you have any rickets? <laughs> no, no, no. Isn't that the one where you, if you take Advil too long, too young? I honestly have no idea. I thought I thought rickets was a fake disease for quite a long time. It's it's some kind of disease you can get. It is a real disease, rickets disease, condition that affects bone development in children. Uh, what do you get if you take Advil as a child? Uh, no, not ibuprofen. I'm literally typing. Man, Google search has gotten so bad. Oh no, wait, Advil. No, no, you're right. What's the other one? The aspirin. Aspirin? Yeah. Rise. Rise. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Rise. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sound it out. Sound it out. I'm sounding it. Rise. 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 You look at that word and you tell me what that is. I can't say the word. I'm trying to find it. R E Y E apostrophe S. Uh, uh, Ray, Ray's. Oh, uh, you know what? You're right, Mark. It's like the barbecue swat, so swa swas. Sweet baby ways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that is because that's spelled differently. Ray's. I was going to say Ray is, but it's got the apostrophe. So it's, it's Ray's. It belongs to Ray. But it's got I in it. Rye. It's pronounced Rise Syndrome. But the one I found is just R E Y E apostrophe S, Rise Syndrome. According to first YouTube video that says the pronunciation, they pronounce it Rise Syndrome. Yeah, because it's got I in it. Oh, I was like, there's no I in there, Mark. I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> no, I see. I see what you're getting at. The word I, yes. Anyway, I think that covers how I'm doing. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Two points for your elusivity, elusiveness. Thank you. How many points did I get? One, because you left the fridge. Well, sacrifice it to the gods. How many points is that worth? Like five. Well, I'll think about it for next time. All right, well, then you have points next time, I guess. Good. I'll be happy. Good. Uh, speaking of, I'm also good. I almost unironically said, oh, how are your dogs? But I would never do that to you. Thank you. I know... That they're fine, and no thanks for asking. I, listen, I don't typically believe in jinxing things, but man, every time I've said that on this show, something horrible has happened, and I don't know if I'm willing to risk it. Every both times, bad stuff has happened. Wasn't that before Keter's, like, nearly died, and before Ginger had to have back surgery? I guess that's true, yeah. I don't know how tightly related those were, but... Well, there's no, there's no real connection at all. I wasn't asking it as a, in connection to the joke, though. I was just curious, honestly. I love the dog. I know, it's a good question, but it's changed me as a man <laughs> being asked it and seeing the results. Everyone, thankfully, as far as I know, is doing well at the current present time. I think you avoided disaster. Or you just cursed everyone in your life. If I have that kind of power, then hell yeah. Well, other than what I just did to them, but like... What did you just do to them? What did you do to them? Catch me in a week and a half or two or whatever. How about that? Did I nail it? <laughs> The catch me outside reference. Didn't see that coming. It was just like the Colin Mockery reference I did on stream. Anyway, I'm hosted today, and I I don't know why this is on my mind, and I don't even know if this is something that you two will relate to at all. I want to talk about reading, like reading books. Do you guys read? Reading. Yeah, yeah, I read. 
I have read. Have you read a book? <laughs> I'm familiar with books. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Is, he sounds like me trying to avoid talking about how I'm doing. <laughs> and I know why I was avoiding it. So, uh, oh God, what's wrong? Two points, Bob, for elusivity. I listen. Uh, books and I go way back, and I ha I read them regularly. I believe you. What about you, Mark? How's your relationship with books? Oh, good. You know, I read a lot of books, but mostly of one specific genre. I think I've talked about a Warhammer 40k. Oh, Warhammer Porny K? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you'll never know. You'll never know. But no, just Warhammer 40k books. But I've, I've kind of started to get tapped out on them because I've read most of the... Yeah, have you not finished those yet? How many how many books are they? You've been doing that? I mean, since, since like 2017, you've been very into books in that in that universe right yeah and and at that point they had a huge back catalog of you know books and i kind of filtered my way through the good ones but when the bad ones are like kind of hard to get through they're a slog they're just not fun like they because they have a diverse range of authors and they crank out those books like four or five a month um and it just gets to the point where it's like i get tired of trying to find uh books that i really will enjoy um and then the new release is a real hit or miss um and then the series that i'm paying attention to is is just like updated three or four times a year so it's it just gets i don't know why i just like to imagine that the bad the like tough to read warhammer books are just like and then the space marine aimed his gun at the guy and then pulled the trigger Dugga, 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 dugga. Want the gun? <laughs> That's <laughs> like, basically. Like, I don't know why. Just like <laughs> written by a middle school boy. Just like, and the guy got shot in the head. Sprinkle in some of the scarlet letter, and it's like, dugga, dugga, dugga. The reader must know the gun sounded, comma, back to action every few lines. And then you've got a real painful fucking read. I mean, I feel like that's how it's going to be in the future with, I mean, it's already happening with AI written books that people are publishing and churning out and just throwing up on like Amazon. I can't imagine an AI written book is any good at all. Like, I, I, I enjoy playing with AI, but it can't do that. How could it Describe hands. Wouldn't that be obvious? It's AI. <laughs> <laughs> the businessmen shook hands on the deal. A knurled, terrifying mess. Almost like two octopuses entangled in a battle to the death. So many fingernails. So many knuckles. And that's when he pointed his three index fingers at me and I knew. <laughs> he waved at his mother for what he knew would be the last time. His nine fingers <laughs> quivering with sadness. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what? I like that. That enriches the book, really. I, maybe I can, maybe I complain too early. Maybe yeah, because uh, right now, I mean, it, uh, there's no way that they could get the cohesion enough to be able to get from start to finish. There is like software that allows you to uh, have like AI come up with ideas, but most of the time nowadays, it, it just really goes off the rails, and you gotta. You basically got to use it as like an an assisting just idea generator, which right now it is kind of good for because it, it can spit out completely random bullshit, which can be good for uh, guiding the process. But yeah, completely written, no way. But there are people that are trying to just completely write a book and then put it out there. And that don't make no sense. Yeah, no, that I, I totally get using it as an helper type deal. But there are people honestly just like what, like putting a prompt in, having an entire book written, and then just trying to publish it without- Write space science fiction where main character's name is John. Go. Write scary novel in style of Stephen King. Enter. It's a hard day's work. Orgy, 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 orgy clown dog. <laughs> Oh, that's not what you're typing in? I thought that's what you were doing for your book. Oh, no, that was the Stephen King horror story. The famous, uh, It Orgy. I've, I've never read it. I've heard of this, but- I haven't I, read you know, it. It's just- I kinda, I kinda heard what the topic was, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna steer clear of that one. Well, so what about books, then? Mark knows books, and so do I, I think I've proven. We've been on this podcast together long enough to know whenever I give a single word topic, I don't fucking know what I want from you. It's just like bread and hair and everything else. This is where right. we go off the rails. No, I'm requesting more information. Well, okay. Favorite books, uh, talking about the benefits of reading, why you do or don't read. I mean, anything you want, really. 
Molly has been reading like a fiend. She reads like 40 to 60 books a year or something crazy. Like we have so many books and we moved into this house. We had some bookshelves. Uh, we bought some bookshelves and they're already full. And she still has like a huge pile of books to get through. And it's like, where are we going to put these books? She loves reading, reads a lot. I remember loving reading. I just haven't made time for reading. But like, I kind of want to. Watching her read makes me want to read. I just don't make the time for it. And I feel like I should. I gotta say, I don't know if law school ruined me on reading or what, but I, I, it makes me sound like such a complaining little child. I don't love, I don't love reading. Gotta be honest. And like law school, for anyone who doesn't know, I read probably, on average, probably a thousand pages a week for law school because every class for every next class was like, oh, read these like three to six cases and a, a case can be like two or three pages real quick and it depends some higher court cases are like you know like a quick memo but also cases tend to be like oh, a lot judges like to go on they like to explain and expound and the bulk of the reading i've done in the last decade of my life was all law school and it was mostly cases and i don't feel like i need to do that anymore i don't think you have to read cases either I know, but like, just the idea of reading is kind of like, ugh. That's fair, but I feel like if you got a good book, you'd probably get, if, if you liked reading before law school at least, if you got a good book, you'd probably get into it. Like, uh, Mark's pointing. I have a dramatic opinion that everyone's gonna be polarized about. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That has to do with reading. And it also has to do with the topic of language learning. So, I'm gonna make this a preface. Bold proclamation for someone that really, truly only speaks one language. All right, we're looking at your ass. <laughs> All right, look at my ass. Look at my, look at my ass, guys. Look, look me in the ass. Um, I believe not only, not only are adults smarter than children, I believe that's just very, we can all agree on that one. That's very true. Very true. Okay, we're all smarter than children, right? I believe that in language learning, trying to read another language is detrimental to your ability to understand that language if that is your first priority in terms of learning a new language. Because humans as adults are smarter than children, but we also have a very high standard of what we accept as being intelligent. So children don't have this same like understanding. Also children can't read very well, can't speak very well. I've covered that before. But I think as an adult, we look at reading and language systems as being like, oh, I can understand that faster. I can learn the alphabet. I can, I can read the words faster. So we try to like use that as the primary way uh, that we get a language. But I'm not talking about speed or efficiency. I'm talking about quality of learning. I believe that using reading as the first system that you do, as opposed to listening and understanding the sounds, because the sounds is the fundamental method of which communication is done. That is the first and foremost biological process of which we understand language by trying to learn the words as they are written, which is a supplementary system to language. It is, it's the supplementary system to exchanging language. It did revolutionize human understanding, but mostly in terms of written records and being able to translate and permanentize, per permanentize, permanentize? Your English is beautiful. Make permanent. Hey, you got there. The transfer of information. And I think, I think, I, I, this is just wild conjecture, but in my experience, my uh, exposure to the language in terms of sound first has dramatically increased my ability to understand. Where I am at with Korean is I understand Korean very well. I can hear it extremely well. And you run into these situations all the time where people start to learn another language and they feel confident in the reading and the, the writing. And you yet you go to another country and you can't hear what anyone's saying. You can't understand anything. And you have this in terms of I know my Korean family and the Korean learning system. They have English in every year of their school for a lot of schools out there. And they take written exams where they read an essay in English and have to understand it in a written form. And yet, if they talk to someone in English and someone is talking to them in English, they can't understand anything. And therefore, the communication is completely broken down because it emphasizes the wrong part of learning. It, it emphasized the supplementary part of understanding a language and not the actual language. By having reading first, you miss out on the actual comprehension. Right now, I am at a place where I am very good at comprehending it in terms of listening. 
and understanding it, and I can get what people saying, and I'm even to the point where I can understand context clues and what I'm hearing for words that I don't know because I listen to the tonality and the emphasis they're putting on certain words. I can't speak it very well, I can speak in broken sentences, but I can understand what's going on even in a fast conversation between my family members. And I think that reading first is a detrimental effect to language learning. I'll assume the opposing position. Uh, I <laughs> no, I think you're probably on to something because that more contemporary language learning stuff does focus on that. For me personally, in the way that my brain works, I think reading actually helps me a lot. Hearing something without understanding how it's spelled, and hearing sounds of a language without context for like what those words look like in terms of like phonetical spelling and what that means, makes it really hard for me to connect things in my brain. So I, you, I agree with you that if you focus on reading, you struggle with uh, conversational comprehension, like listening comprehension. But I would be so lost trying to learn a language without having the context of like, what is the alphabet? What are the letters supposed to sound like? If I hear this sound or this combination, what is that on paper? Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is. But for me, reading is like, crucially important to to understanding the sounds that you hear in the language so it probably partially depends on how a person's brain works and how they learn but like i think you are pretty right because like the the old school way of just you do vocabulary you take a vocab test that's how you learn spanish in high school like i don't think that sticks very well i think a lot more americans would speak spanish if that type of learning was effective because like in our school district, everyone took language and 95% of people took Spanish. I took German because I'm weird and that was a poor choice. I really wish I'd learned Spanish. But like no one speaks it. <laughs> None of my friends from high school can still speak Spanish and they took, you know, three or four years of it or whatever. So you're probably right. I would agree too. I took a really bad opposing position. I'm sorry. That's the okay. best way to do it is probably to pair both. It's probably to like hear a word and then like hear it pronounced out loud and then like see it spelled so that you know what you're listening to. That there is a research article that compared this. There were students that were there was a I believe in some South American university. I can't remember which one, but they were trying to learn English, right? So they they watched content in a few different ways and they had a few different control groups. One of them watched it with no subtitles, just in English. One watched in English subtitles uh, and then one watched in, uh, I believe, Spanish subtitles, depending on what the country was. And they they measured how many words they learned. So when they when they watched with Spanish subtitles, they learned no new words. Even though the audio was all in English and they were trying to like pay attention to learn new words, they made no associations. When they watched with no subtitles at all and just English, they learned like 14 new words just from the context clues. And then they had the ones that learned with, uh, watched with English audio and English subtitles by being able to hear and look at the word associations, they learned like 17 new words because they were able to compare to the, the words that are there. Now, I question the actual metric whether it's understanding or memorization or learning because humans are good at pattern recognition but I, I still believe that if you're reading a language and you're reading a word that is not your native language, you are not reading it with the proper sounds associated in your head. So you're reading it based on your learning of that language, which can reinforce accents. And I think like you can learn faster, yes, but you learn based on your beginner understanding of that language's pronunciation because in your head is not built the voice of that language and that's why what i'm saying is like reading is detrimental if you want a native level like like understanding of that language where you hear it in your head with the proper sounds uh and the mouth positions automatically associated with it but if you if you learn you can learn faster if that's your objective by having both the target language audio and the target language uh words but i believe the only way to get like fluency with actual like loss of accent and being native level speaking is purely audio only. But I have no evidence to this. I could see it either way. Um, I have a funny story. I don't know if I've told this one on here. I was at a mm -hmm. convention a few years ago with Molly 
down in Texas and they had like an ice cream truck and we both went up and got an ice cream but it was a really hot day when we were in Texas in the summer and the ice cream just melted all over so it was like some kind of like black ice cream promoting a game or something mm -hmm. and we were getting ready to go to dinner we looked down we were just covered in ice cream so we went back to our hotel room we we're like okay let's change clothes and there was a housekeeper in our hotel room like cleaning the room and I asked her um she like greeted us in Spanish and I asked her like do you speak English hablas inglés and she said no, and I was like, okay, wait, this is your time. Four and a half years of Spanish, you can convey that you need to change clothes. So I pointed to like the stains on my shirt and was <laughs> like, uh, we need a moment, uh, like necesitamos un minuto para ropa nueva. I was like, new clothes, is that good? Did I do it? And she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, we need to change our clothes. I tried saying it again and she was like, oh, okay. And then she kept doing what she was doing. And I was like, okay, I got something wrong. I need to try it again. So I like tried again. And then she's like, um, I still didn't say it correctly. There was still no understanding. So we like grab, we were like running late. So we just grabbed shirts, ran to the restroom and changed. And I was like, what the hell she thought I said? We came back from dinner and she oh. had folded all of our dirty laundry <laughs> just for some reason the pile of dirty clothes she folded them and i was like how did i get this so wrong i swear i said we need new clothes because of and i pointed to the stains i know how to say stains and it crushed me because after four and a half years of spanish and the last year and a half two years we had to speak and listen in spanish we had to speak only in spanish in class I still was not very good at listening or speaking. I could read it, like you said, I could read it, no problem. But speaking and listening, I try to remember how to say certain things. Hearing her speak back to me, it was like, oh God, she talks to something, uh, room, uh, time. Like, you know, I, I could pick out like certain words, but I couldn't get the whole sentence. It was like, dude, I know it's been like eight years, but I took so many years of Spanish. How am I not able to listen? And you're hundred percent right. I, I, it's probably because I was so comfortable with the reading and writing that listening and speaking was definitely, I was nowhere close on those. Mark's hypothesis is confirmed. 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 Now that, that is my one bit of evidence toward your claim. And I'm so sorry, lady, if you watch this podcast, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I die of a feeling. Dude, dirty underwear from a sweaty convention you should have never had to touch. I'm sorry. She's sitting in her car, crashing into a <laughs> shave ice stand right now, <laughs> not understanding a word you're saying. Wait, maybe she's learned English at this point. I don't know. She didn't speak English, but that doesn't mean she couldn't. I cannot describe the horror of seeing dirty underwear and socks folded neatly that she, for some reason, thought I was requesting her to do. I would love to know exactly what you actually said and get an accurate translation. Cause she that's... got home and she was like, I had the worst day. <laughs> no. So my, I took German, my dad uh, studied German too when in his uh, educational pursuits. And um, we were in Germany at one point, we were on a family trip and we were in Germany and we were sitting at a cafe. It, it's bold. It feels bold to like speak, a language in another country, right? Like I had never spoken German with Germans. I'd only talked to my teachers and cl classmates and stuff. And I, I did a couple, I had a couple of moments of like translating and speaking, you know, saying a sentence or something. But my dad was like nervous about it and didn't want to do it. But he looked up, we were sitting at this cafe and it was like, t we were done eating and it was like time to go. And he was like, I know how to say check please in German. You say, uh, Rechnung bitte. Rechnung means check, bitte means please. Super easy. It's, it's a correct, you know, sentence. You could convey the sentiment. It's super easy. And he's sitting there and he's like, Die Rechnung bitte. Die Rechnung bitte. But, and, and like sitting there and he's like working on it and he's like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And the, and the waiter like walks over and he like gets, you know, puts the hand up, gets attention. And the waiter is like, oh yeah. And he's just like, can I have the check, please? <laughs> and like, that was, that was so good. And then that same trip, we're in another situation. We're at a place to like having a, having a beer, you know, hanging out. It's the same thing. He's like, I know how to ask for a beer in German. Nach ein Bier bitte. 
knock ein Bier, bitte. But, and the same thing, and like, gets all worked up, and he's like, knock ein Bier, knock ein Bier, knock ein Bier. And the waiter comes by, and he's like, oh, one more beer, please. <laughs> get out of He like turns southern. He's like, yo, can I get another Bud Light? Like, oh, <laughs> so fucking funny. Like, yeah, you know what? It is really intimidating to be in another country. Well, and especially as an American, when my family, my dad, I look like my dad, right? And so we're like big, huge, tall, we're like giant Americans. We're so obviously Americans that it's like painful. And everybody outside of America expects Americans to be so fucking stupid. So it's like, it's not like if you, you, if you say something and it's kind of wrong, you don't expect that, and I, we didn't have this, but you don't expect people to be like, oh, good try. Actually, yeah, no, I know what you mean. You expect people to just be like, stupid American thinks he speaks German. What an idiot. We never had that experience, but like, that's kind of how it feels. Like people fucking hate Americans in other, especially in Europe was my experience. But yeah, my poor dad, he tried, man. It's a lot of pressure. Okay. But also, he probably hadn't actually studied German for like 30 years at that point. I don't even know if he did it in college. I think he did it in high school. But It's got to be worse for people coming here and going to restaurants than it is for us going to restaurants. I had a hard time not tipping waiters and waitresses in Europe. But I imagine people that come here that have never had to do that. It's got to be the most confusing fucking thing to see like a line where you put more money. It's like, but it costs this. Well, imagine coming from a country where they include the tax in the price that's listed. I was about to in say, in a lot yeah. of European yeah, places, too. it'll something you know something will be like this costs nine euros. That includes everything. When you go to the cash register, you hand them nine euros, or you swipe your card, and that's what it costs. In America, it's like a fucking mystery. You go up, <laughs> it's like, well, this said it costs six dollars. Like that'll be nine sixty, please, plus tip, jerk. Oh, God damn, <laughs> what do numbers mean? Why is this such a mystery? Could do that, America. Could just include the tax in the thing. You live in a place where the tax is always the same, except maybe if the law changes. At least they do recommended tip a lot of places now, so at least that's a thing. That, that didn't used to be on receipts. I don't think that's better. I think we should pay people. I think we should pay people enough money that they don't require customers to be generous in order for them to pay their bills. I agree with you, but at least for the customer's sake, it's a step in the right direction. So that at least they're reminded like, you should tip. Do they have to tip? No, companies should just pay better. But and I just want to be clear, I do tip. I'm not that guy who's like, ah, I don't tip on principle because that's fucking awful. You know, what if we just paid people enough money to live in a house with electricity and water? Crazy talk. Crazy. Can't believe this guy. That's un-American is what that is. Anyway, uh, what, what, how is this about books? Anyway, kids can't read. This is about reading. Reading is the topic, so reading. Kids can't, oh yeah, kids can't read. Kids can't read. Wait, so, so I'm not a big, I'm not a rapid reader, but I have, you know what, have you guys ever had this where like, something comes up and you're like, oh, I should try that book. Like, that sounds really good. It's like really popular or someone recommends it. And you just get sucked in. Like uh, the last time this happened to me was with the, the Ready Player One book. And like, I get that's very like, I don't know if that's a cool book or not. The movie was questionable. But the book, I think, is really good. It, it represents a world to me that could exist in a lot of ways, and it ties to reality in ways where I'm like, ooh, that's, that's not a good pat. Like, it's interesting. I read that book in one night. I picked it up, and I was like, oh, I'll just read this before bed a little bit. And then at, like, six in the morning, I finished the book, and I was like, whoa, what happened? What the shit? I, like, couldn't stop reading it. Does that happen to you guys? Oh, my God, yeah. Does not happen a lot to me, but when it happens, it's like I get sucked into another universe. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's what makes reading addicting for people. It doesn't happen a lot, but there are certain books that are just, like, so incredibly well-written, or maybe it's not the greatest written, but it's just, like, it opens up a world you've never imagined before, and you do just get sucked in, um, and that is nice. Like, that's a very nice feeling. It's just, like, it's so rare that it occurs. It's very few and far between that you actually find that that one that really is gonna get there but growing up there's a lot of controversy obviously now but growing up for us harry potter was a popular series right and like when the harry potter books would come out i would always read those like the next day or that night it was like you go to the midnight release get the book next day read done uh the hobbit 
I've not actually read the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but reading The Hobbit, I actually did that for like four years in a row for book reports. I did the same book just because I wanted to read The Hobbit again. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, no, <clears throat> listen, that sounds good and all, but uh, I, I'm going to point out that maybe you were being lazy. Were you just trying to pull one over on your teachers there a little bit there, young Wade? The thing is, though, I actually reread the book each time. <laughs> yeah, but it's not new. Just because you reread it doesn't mean it's different. I think even as a kid, I realized, because like growing up, I liked reading the Animorphs, like in like first, second grade, the Animorph series. And then there were obviously books that you read throughout life that you don't enjoy. I remember reading The Hobbit and I was like, okay, this is like seen as being higher level than reading Animorphs. I can do a book report on this. And the next year it was like, I don't know. I don't know any books. I know I like The Hobbit. I'll just do that again. I want to read that again. And that was kind of my reasoning. It wasn't like to not uh -huh. read a no, new book. Because sure. I did reread it each time. It was just because I knew I liked it. And I wanted an excuse to read it again. Younger me was a lot less lazy than older me. I've gotten really bad in my older years. And it's I've got many hopefully older years left. I don't know. Younger you seems pretty lazy too from the stories <laughs> I'm hearing. <laughs> that seems like yeah. it's the same level of laziness. Because I learned after the first time of redoing The Hobbit. I was like, so my teachers don't communicate. They don't know I did this. <laughs> that, see, that's the scheming part there. Yeah, see, that's but the I didn't part. know that the first time I redid it. I knew it was a gamble, but uh, then I learned I was home free. Speaking of being lazy students, did you ever, and if so, how many times did you guys ever give a Cliff Notes book report? Did you ever do this? Mm -mm. Also, for the younger listeners out there, viewers, hopefully, viewers, yeah. not listeners, uh, Cliff Notes... My back when we were kids. Is it not a thing anymore? I don't know, man. But There's like at least it's, spark notes, right? It, yeah, it's like a summary of the book, right? And you don't read the whole book, but you read the Cliff's notes, and then you're like, Yeah, I read that. Did you guys do this? I read the I re always did the reading. I was a good student, so I always did the reading. But there were times where I read something like I don't remember I think Heart of Darkness was like a tough there were some books that were like tough reads. And there was like uh was it Hemingway who kind of wrote in like old English that was kind of fanciful reading? There were a couple authors I remember I read their stuff and then I finished and I was like, okay, what the hell all just happened? And then I would go and look at the spark notes or the cliff notes to like refresh my memory and make sure that I actually was like comprehending the reading right, but I never relied exclusively on them. So number one, cliff notes is still a thing, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. If you go to their website, it's like the oldest wet looking website I've seen in a while. It was so advanced back in the day. <laughs> um, but I didn't do a Cliff's Notes book report. Uh, one time when I was in fourth grade with that teacher that I didn't like, uh, there was we had to do a book report. And I thought I read it. I really truly thought that I read the book. So I wrote a mm -hmm. book report. Like in one, like in in the morning. In the morning, I was like, I read it last night. I'll write a book report and I'll get it done. I got the assignment. I did it that morning. You know, I didn't watch TV in the morning like I thought I, I usually do. Go to school, hand in the book report. Like next day or later in that week, whenever the grading thing was, I get pulled outside the class. Like the teacher literally pulls me out of class like, <laughs> I need to speak with you. Get outside in the hallway. And she, she, she like looms over me like, I, I've seen bad book reports before. I've seen people cheating, like doing all the book reports again. <laughs> I've never seen the most inane bullshit rambling <laughs> that you put in your book report. <laughs> and I'm like, the whole time, I'm just like, oh, I, I, read, I did what you asked. I wrote a book report about that book. And then I was like, like, how could, did you think you'd get away with putting like, time travel and <laughs> random spaceships or whatever the hell I put in. And it was like a book about like uh, the, the, the Grapes of Wrath or some book <laughs> like that. And what happened was I had dreamed I read the book. <laughs> The night prior, I dreamed I read it, and that's what I I thought the book was. All of my dream thoughts. So I woke up the next morning like, oh man, I'm glad I read that book. <laughs> and then I wrote the book report. And that's when Rosa Share and beamed up into the Enterprise. I wish, I wish that book report still existed, but I think she shredded it right in front of my face <laughs> or something like that. I am like, I wish I could go back and read what that book report said because man, I want to read the fan a full imagination that I had and somehow translated from my dream thoughts into a book report. So yeah, dream notes. That's really the uh, the real source of uh, abridging a book. Yeah. And what grade did you end up getting on that? Oh, I don't uh, is zero a grade. I don't know. F minus. F minus. <laughs> the yeah, first that was F it. minus in recorded history. Really, truly. Yeah. So 
I read the Grapes of Wrath. It was okay. I made a, a mo- that was my first ever content I made was following reading the Grapes of Wrath. We made like a sequel movie that I yes. wish also existed. I would totally air that on YouTube if I could find it. I was in that class, and I think our group did us like the same thing. Yeah. Well, my question was just a trap, and I never did that either. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm course. not that kind of bad student. Right. Who, yeah. Look, if I'm being super honest. It's a toss-up whether I actually read more of the books or actually just cliff notes more of the books in high school. I gotta be real honest, guys. Oof. It's probably good I didn't become a lawyer because I don't think you could cliff notes law stuff. I don't think I ever did that. The, the one book I wish I had and I will forever rip on it is The Scarlet Letter. There has never been a worse piece of literature I have read in my life, including like looking at like fifth grade papers when we had to trade papers and read each other's papers. I would rather read someone who didn't care at all than ever read Nathaniel Hawthorne's fucking Scarlet Letter again. I had three books I had to read one summer. I had A Prayer for Owen Meany, The Scarlet Letter, and I don't remember what the third one was. A Prayer for Owen Meany was like a thick book. The Scarlet Letter was like a hundred pages decent sized words i was like dude i will read this in one afternoon something about that book was the ultimate melatonin i would read four <laughs> lines and fall the fuck asleep no matter i would drain like three sodas i'd sit up i wasn't even laying back i'd open that book up and arthur dimsdale the reader must know and his dear hester Prynne took their little pearl and Every fucking time. I didn't read that book, but I watched the movie and I thought Emma Stone did a great job. Didn't see the movie. The movie is probably great. The story is probably great. But something about every four fucking lines having to read the phrase the reader must know took me out. I could not get into it. And I swear to you, I'm pretty sure that that line is in there a whole bunch. Couldn't tell you because I can only read three lines at a time of that fucking book. It took me all summer to read that book. The other two books, I read both in the same week. Were you talking about Easy A? Yeah, the movie adaptation of The Scarlet Letter (laughs) is called Easy A starring Emma Stone. I thought you were reading the book real quick to see if it actually says all those things. No, I, I saw the movie. 2010's comedy romance movie Easy A, starring Emma Stone, Penn Badgley, Amanda Bynes, Stanley Tucci, and Lisa Kudrow. Isn't there actually a Scarlet Letter movie adaptation? Yeah, there is. Oh, I don't want to watch that. That sounds awful. The, the story is probably fine. It's just the way it was written was not my... It was the worst thing I'd ever read in my life. I could not get into it at all. A Prayer for Owen Meany, I was like, okay, this sounds like it has some kind of religious context. I'm not a big religion guy. I'm going to hate this book. I was like... This was enjoyable. I'd read that again. That was fine. But the Scarlet Letter was the one I started with. I was like, let's get the small one out of the way first. It took me like two and a half of our three months off to get through that fucking book. Every day I would read three lines and it was like I wanted to bash my head against a brick wall. Never had more pain in my life than trying to get through that book. I feel like everyone that I've ever talked to about reading in high school has that exact sentiment that you have, but it's always about a different book. Catcher in the Rye, maybe? Is that one of the ones people hate? No, like, like it's all books. Oh, like okay. it, each individual just has some book where that's the one that they feel the way that you feel about Scarlet Letter. Because, because you could have that exact same conversation and just insert any book, and they're just like a Holden Caulfield <laughs> wandering through a straw field. Well, what a late, you know, whatever. I did actually read Catcher in the Rye, but I sincerely don't remember ninety percent of it. I think it's fair to not like old old books written in old some of them again were fine but that one for some just the way the way that one it's broke okay. the fourth it's wall okay, to talk wait. to me yeah, it's... it was like leave me the fuck alone nathaniel get back to the goddamn story half your book is saying the reader must fucking know i know i must know that's why i'm reading it can't hurt you now wade it can it does yeah. dude it haunts me you could just stop thinking about it you don't have to think about it no one is gonna give you a quiz it's okay <sighs> Anyway, next time I win, I'm going to make it about Nathaniel Hawthorne. That'll be the topic. And we're going to go. And Mark <laughs> just lost all of his points. <laughs> going to go deep into the lore. Of- Dude, it's just going to be me raging for like an hour. That's all it will be. I don't get why people need to read the older books in school. I get there's some historically important books and they have like topical relevant things for historical reasons. But also, I agree with you. Some of those books are just plain old boring especially compared to, like, culturally relevant things today. 
Marquardt's English class to read only books in the Warhammer universe. How much better it's would we be off? How much better would we be as a society? All worshipping the god emperor of mankind as we should. And learn about the dangers of chaos. It's all, it's all in there. I'll, the only thing I know about Warhammer 40k is the story you told about the, the one planet where the orcs that live on it believe anything that you say or do is real and so they're you, instead of having guns they just go like this and they're all dugga, 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 and the guys are all and they die uh, i mean that's like not just one planet and also that's a general misconception about the orcs eh, whatever you told me the story you correct it then Whoa! It's just the orcs are the best, like, book subjects. The books about the orcs, specifically written by Mike Brooks, like, they're just really, really, really funny. I, I just really am entertained by those stupid fucking orcs. They're great. I love everything about them. Or smart. They're actually very smart. I know some lore about them, but not enough to have a good conversation with you, probably. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, Catch-22 was a great book. I love Catch-22. I don't know how old... Oh, that one's gotta be after at least World War One. So that's not as old as... I did like that book. I read that book. I don't know that book. All the King's Men was a good one. There was, there was a bunch of good ones I read. To Kill a Mockingbird I read in sixth grade. I don't think I fully understood it, but I like that book, too. Hey, wait, guys. Can we do... Can we do a test? Yes. The book series about the family of bears. The Berenstain Bears. Does that sound right to you? I don't know. I know this thing, but I don't know which one's the truth. This is this is like a Mandela effect thing. Yeah, the Berenstein, Berenstein. Apparently it's Berenstein bears. And I definitely was in the Berenstein camp. I wonder if that was just us being like Midwesterners and pronouncing things how we wanted to. Probably. Probably. But I don't know. I at this point, even now, I don't know which one's the correct one, and I can't say anything with confidence about it. Ah, whatever. Did you guys ever get any of those? Though I will say, I was a boxcar children kid. I read those too. Yeah, I like those too. I love the boxcar. I would. That was one of the ones where I'd buy that from like the book fair. I would buy the new boxcar children books that kind. Of, I love those books. I don't even know what that is. The boxcar children. I don't even know what that is. I've it's never like a, seen that. A, it's, it's, I honestly, I don't remember a lot of details now. But like, they were they were like orphan kids who lived in a in an abandoned box car from like a train car type thing. But yeah, they like solved mystery type things. I love choose your own adventure goosebumps. Mm. Some of those were good. I had the Hotel Moriarty or whatever it was called. I remember reading that one, the Choose Your Own Adventure, and I always got so pissed off because somehow I always ended up in the hotel room and I ate the candy and died. Mm. <laughs> Couldn't you just not have eaten the candy, or is that not a choice? Yeah, but it sounded good. It was like nice little candy on the pillow, and I was like, <laughs> I can't say no. <laughs> you get back to the exact same page with your smudgy little fingerprints all over it. It's all crumpled up from your angry outrage from the last ten times you got you, and you're like. Ah, the candy sounds so good. What if it's different? What if it's different? What if something different happens this time? Ah, I'll eat the candy. God damn it! I don't know if there's actually a good ending in that book or not. I always fucking died. You know, you can just read any page you want at any moment. I feel like this is indicative of how you approach video games to this day, because I swear every time you try to do something <laughs> in a video game, you just fall into the same exact trap. As you are now is exactly what you were then is what we're discovering. No, no, no. I'm bald now. <laughs> Are you sure you weren't bald then? You've always been bald. This is like my sixth sense moment. Some bald people don't know they're bald. <laughs> Looking in the mirror and the hair just disappears. Can I be real with you? Goosebumps was too scary for me as a kid. Honest to God, I liked some of the books, but some of them, I don't remember specifically but which ones, but I, I read, I remember reading one and getting to the end and being like, nope, nope, no more Goosebumps, too much. I found myself less scared of that. Then the show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? I watched Are You Afraid of the Dark, but that show always scared me a lot more than Goosebumps show or books ever did. Granted, in my family, I also watched like scary horror movies a lot younger than I probably should have. I was exposed to a lot of things as a kid I probably wasn't, shouldn't have been, but Goosebumps was like, ah, there, this is kids stuff as I'm a kid reading it. In conclusion, me and books, not so chill. Unless it's a really goddamn good book. There's some good ones out there. I'll never know because I refuse to read. It's the catch-22 of it all. Uh, you get bonus points for that because I like that book. How many points do I have? Uh, currently less than Bob after I just gave him points. Ah. Molly said Catcher in the Rye was the one she couldn't stand. That's what I thought it was. Catcher in the Rye. Never read that one myself. Uh, I guess let us know what books you like or didn't like. 
Talk about the ones you don't like. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I'm interested in both because I, I wouldn't mind picking up a book and reading again. I need to. Which books make you absolutely enraged? What is your scarlet letter? Mark, any clever things you want to say for last minute points? I think that uh, anyone that doesn't read is dumb. Uh, Bob, how does it make you feel? <laughs> if you has, if you has, if you has, look it, look at it, look at it, 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 if you has, look at that book, you might not even know why you had to do that. That's a Brian Regan joke about the debate over reading, and I'm on the side of not reading, apparently. Did you know, wait, the, I, I came across the actual uh, uh, illiteracy stats. There's actually a surprising amount of, of people that can't read, uh, which I found fascinating in an era where almost everyone consumes online content, and I know that's not mm. actually everyone, but nationwide, 79% of U.S. adults are literate. 21% of people cannot read. 54% adults who are literate read below a sixth grade level. So more than half of the population of adults read at a level that is that would not pass the seventh grade. I think it really depends on what part of the country you're in and what your life is too, though. I will say the illiterate thing, the, the standard for that, if I remember correctly, being illiterate does not mean that you have no idea what the hell those mystical symbols mean, and you walk into like a grocery store and you're like, oh, how much does this cost? God. Like you can look at a thing and like you know a word, you can see numbers and you know it, like it doesn't, it means you can't read like literature, you can't read prose, doesn't mean you can't comprehend basic stuff. If you live in a world where you helped with on the farm instead of going to school sometimes and you or you got a job, you know, machining or or welding or whatever, like like I'm terrible at math. I'd probably do math below a middle school level, if I had to guess. I'm I am I can't even add shit together sometimes. I think it depends how much you use it. And if you live in a world where you don't read at work, you don't really need to read, you know, to get by to to know what you're doing online. You read words or phrases, but you don't read like, you know, extended prose. Is it is it that bad? I mean, it'd be great if everyone read because reading is a great way to learn and expose yourself to more stuff. But that statistic might be misleading. And I, my grandpa never learned to read. My grandma always like read the mail to him and stuff like that. So whenever she passed away, it was like he had to figure out how to look through like mail and letters and stuff because he just never had to learn to read. Which is such a fascinating thing. And I bet like some of these statistics are influenced, yeah, by people that don't speak English as a first language come here and then obviously they can't read English. Oh, sure. Yeah. So that's that's definitely a method by which it is. But I, I also like there in hilarious side of things, there, there are many celebrities and I'm not going to name names just in case like these are just violent rumors that are horribly untrue. But there's some celebrities that people suspect can't read and have somehow just skated by <laughs> like, like, <laughs> skated by with never being able to actually read anything and i know there are people out there that are embarrassed by the fact that they can't read and they get by in everyday life uh going there but i do think that it's a big detriment reading especially nowadays with so many things being online is such a default thing yeah well growing up the way we did it's hard to even imagine a world where you don't you aren't forced to do that we we didn't never there's no version of the life that we grew up in where you don't just learn to read because you have to go to school and that's part of that you don't get to pass the next grade unless you read some shit yeah but that's not ubiquitous well and i can also understand why people would be embarrassed i i'm sure that i exude the same energy and i don't mean to people are so judgy about it I wouldn't really care if I was interacting with someone and I learned that they couldn't read. Clearly, we're having a conversation. We're interacting. Like, it doesn't mean that you're not smart. It means probably that you come from a world that I don't understand where yeah. school was not as important when you were a kid or whatever. But, like, I, yeah, I imagine a lot of people get a lot of shit for that coming up especially if you like actors right if you come from somewhere where you didn't learn to read but then you're now you're an actor so you're like in hollywood or whatever mm. i don't think a lot of hollywood comes from a place where reading was optional and you know they you know they come from a place more like where we come from where it's like you went to school you graduated high school whatever maybe you went to college like reading which is sort of assumed is a thing everyone did so yeah i would imagine you get a lot of shit for that pretty much regardless of context i can see that being a, a sore spot for people
But it's okay, man. I can only barely read, and I can't do math, so I'm I'm in no position to judge anybody. I read great, and I'm good at pretty much everything I do except for art. <laughs> Look, I I went to law school, and I made it out of there, but I still am not sure how or why they let me graduate. And there's a reason I chose not to become a lawyer. I've got, like, maxed out stats except for being able to draw and being able to have hair. Otherwise, I'm, like, the perfect being. You're so awesome, Wade. You're so great. You're the best. Thank you. You know what? Ten points to me. We all just wish we could be as good as you are. I have been adding points throughout. I gotta say, somehow, <laughs> you guys, through all this talk, have tied it up again. So we have a tied score. Even though you deleted all my points? Can I lick your butt cheeks for you? <laughs> Can you lick my butthole for me? Is that what Can you I say? bury my nose in there and just give you a kiss right in the booty? You can if you want. Does that get me points? Um, no. I love a bald man. The strong look. I just figured we'd come down to one of our favorite things. The wheel. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. I thought we were done with this. I can't read. I don't know what this wheel's going to say, so. Why are there so many colors? And why, like, I don't get why the distribution is like this. Why isn't Mark, it? Mark, Bob, Mark, Bob. Wade is on there. It's literally just randomized. That's not very, that's a pattern. It's just a stupid pattern. I feel like a fair distribution is ba 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 ba, you know, one after another. It's an even amount of things. It doesn't matter if it's equally. <sighs> you guys just want to see the pattern. I get it. I got it. a bad feeling. That's how patterns work. <laughs> Patterns are things you can see. There is like a 48% chance either one of you can win and whatever percent this is, five, 10, I don't know for me. It doesn't look like that small of a percentage. I gotta be Mine real Mine should honest. be smaller. I think I changed this because maybe you guys pissed me off last time or something, or maybe I just felt like I really deserved to win. Well, I hope you, I hope you win, Wade. I, you deserve it. Such oh, a, thanks. such an angelic being like yourself. Well, no, but no host has ever given themselves the win before. And we do have that power. So I guess we'll, <laughs> Oh. oh, that's that thing that he was saying. That's that thing. Did I tell you? I've solved it. I know oh, yeah? what causes it. Also, Will, I don't know what all he just shared, so you might need to hire whoever that did. I need to hide that. Blur the screen. <laughs> what was up there? So, I have a new keyboard, and my keyboard has buttons along the left side of it. And when uh. I grab my water bottle, I've noticed the bottom of my water bottle, like, taps the keyboard. And where I do it, it perfectly hits this stupid-ass button that does that. So you were just accidentally resting, hitting your keyboard. I don't even know what side keys mean. Do you mean like physically sticking out the side or like yes, just here. on the far left edge of the top of the keyboard? Can you see how there's like buttons here? Is it? Oh, you literally mean on the side. Yes, there's like yeah, no, three buttons that's, there. That's it. That is super weird. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I had no reason to suspect that was a thing. But there's three buttons. I don't know what the other two do. I'm too afraid to touch them. I all somehow only ever. Oh, push them right, right, right now. Push them right now. Push them right now. Push them right now. Oh, no. What was that? What was I'm that? not trusting the other one. The push other the other was one. The, the other one was the scary looking one. And I just like. Push the other crying. one. Anyway, hope we have lots of good blurring there, because I don't know what I just shared. What is, what is on your desktop? My points. Do you want to see my point sheet? There you go. <laughs> wow. It's good you got a whole document up just for that. I don't save it. I delete it afterward. You know, notepad exists. Sticky notes, even. You could just use that. I'm a word pad kind of guy, because it has a W in it. I like W. Anyway, let's see who wins. Where even is the pointer? Where? How do we tell who wins this? Oh, it's at the top. Okay. Ha. Yay! And all is right in the world, I guess, because we're back to fair chance. Bob, do you want best two out of three? I'll spend two more times for you if you want. Yes. Yes, I do. All right. Best two out of three. I I would Mark wins this one again. There's there's no chance I win this. Wait, I didn't even agree to I didn't agree to best two. All right. Three out of five. No, I don't Let's agree to any of keep this. It rolling. Oh, keep it rolling. We all agree. Hey, hey Bob, hey, one more. Oh, there we go. I don't know what the what what if I I, I just I like feel... spinning the wheel, man. I just like clicking the button. Ah. Oh, two to oh, two. It's tied. Hey, there is balance in the universe. Would you look one at that? One wheel to. Sp to spin them all. Wait, what happens now if Wade wins? Do you just win instantly, or do you have to do you have to get to three out of five as well? well I hope we don't have to find out. And the winner of this episode is Bob. Hey! 
Mark, unless you want best of seven. <laughs> you do have the power to unilaterally call for four out of seven. If, I'm, if I have the power, you have the same power. I'll, I'll grant you that. Mark, you have, you have three seconds to decide. No, okay, here, I'll flip a coin to decide whether I'll do that. Uh, you know, even more fair. Did we do best of seven? Let's, Let's coin see. flip. Do I go for <laughs> seven? Let me pull up my coin app. Let's let fate decide. All right, fate's going to decide. Heads, I go for five of seven, four of seven. What is it? Four of seven. Four out of seven. Hup. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, I don't go for it. It's tails. Oh, the coin is spoken. I honestly can't believe that. I was pretty sure you were going to win that, and then you were going to win two more in a row, and then that was going to be the end of it. That's it. I earned that win. Good. I did. I made choices that have that led to me winning. I caused. I did that. In a precedent, I definitely won't live to regret. You guys can always ask for more spins. No. I just like spinning the wheel. You can spin the wheel on your own. I do spin it on my own. I have a Wade wheel. I just spin just as Wade. I'm just spinning. <laughs> <laughs> There's ten inputs of Wade. I'm so sure that that's actually real. That I love it. Bob, you have a winner's speech. Ah, uh, well, it feels good to win. You know, it feels really good to earn a lot of points, more points than Mark, more points than Mark could ever hope to earn, really. Uh, and, you know, it just, it's rewarding to put the hard work in, to uh, play by the rules, and to ultimately get what you deserve in the end of everything. And, uh, you know, I think Mark also got what he deserves. He deserves to lose. He, he probably would have won. I took points away from him when he asked me to, but I thought his, like, language conversation was so good, he just kept earning points. That's right. That's right. You got to keep playing. You're never out of it. You know, never out of it. Even at, even at the end when the winner's been declared, you're never out of it. E even when the judge has said that you lost the episode, and that seems to be the we end. We have precedent. Remember the episode called "Bob Wins This Episode." We've seen it before. <laughs> you just gotta keep playing by the rules, and you can succeed. It's never over. That's what I'm learning. That's how I view the world. That's how I approach everything I do. Uh huh. So, uh, congratulations to me. <laughs> Above everyone else, and great game, everybody. Great game. Great game. Great game. Mark, what's your uh, speech for being the not winner? I have so many dramatic opinions about reading that I didn't share in this episode because I knew the best would come for later. I eagerly look forward to reading part two because I know that's where we always save the content for. So look forward to it. I'm glad I held back because my amazing reading stories, I want to milk this content for everything that it's worth. And you're only going to get it once we decide you deserve it, which you don't. You don't, you one Reddit user, why you specifically? I love that we have like a million you people that watch this and this one person, like everyone, there's so many criticisms probably of this podcast, that one person has irked us so hard. We will never forgive you. We will milk this till the day we die. Yeah, be careful what you wish for or also wish the opposite for. <laughs> Because we're going to give it to you, viewer listeners. We're milking their criticism of our milking of content till the end for content. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's the episode. Congrats, Bob. Mark, you should have asked for more spins. Can't I believe should, a coin should, flip. You, you know should have what? never left but it up the chance. But regrets are regrets, then you can't make bets against the regrets that you have let. That's what they always say. Uh, if you guys haven't already, go follow us. Mark, Markiplier. Bob Myskerm, he's moving to Ohio soon. Make sure you sub to his YouTube and follow him on Twitch for that. Extra shout out for moving to Ohio, bonus points. Uh, I'm Wade, Minion777, Lord Minion 777. You can find merch, maybe, probably, hopefully. It's out there, unless it's sold out again. Store at destructiblepodcast.com. I bought some and I had it shipped to the wrong address. Merch, we got it. You want it, go buy it. And uh, I guess stay tuned for the next one when Bob will host and I'm sure great things will happen. Until then. Podcast out.